naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Right, and here we go. Welcome, everybody, to uh, With Insights Radio. I'm Iggy Garcia. This is Iggy Garcia Live, episode 101. Today, my guest is Rochelle Phillips. She's a mystic. She's going to be sharing with us a little bit about herself and kind of what's going on in the world and what she's feeling and all kinds of cool things. Um, so, and here if, we go. if uh, Welcome everybody to uh, With Insights Radio. I'm Iggy Garcia. All right, so we got a. I got turned off my other Iggy Garcia because he's talking too, and I can't have him going at the same time as I am. So. She's going to be sharing with us a little bit about herself and kind of what's going on in the world and what she's feeling and all kinds of cool things. All right, so here we go. So, all right, everybody. So we're going to start the show off here, and we always do with lighting a candle and giving thanks to our ancestors. And so. We light the ancestral candle here, especially now at this time, during uh, this time of uh, uncertainty and and things to come and and things that we hope to uh, receive while we're in our own little isolation camps, doing what we need to do, feeling what we need to feel. And so I raise this candle, give thanks to everybody who's come before us, who has paved the way for us, shared with their stories and their feelings and their emotions and their blood, sweat, and tears. To get us all to this moment in time and get us to this place where we can share and offer uh, our insights. And also we'll light a little bit of sage here. Just to clear and cleanse the room. All right, so. I always like burning a little sage or palo santo before every show. Just kind of sets the mood, sets the tone. And a little agua florida, a little Florida water. Because a shaman can't be without his Florida water. So just something. It's like aftershave, right? <laughs> just get us all cleansed and ready to go. So welcome everybody to the show. Um, we are here live. I'm broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the universe. Um, Rochelle, I don't know where she's at, but we're just going to say something very similar. So, Rochelle, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here. Um, it's good to be here, right? That's what they say. Yeah, it really is nice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I asked Rochelle to come on the show because I want to get kind of get different insights from my friends in the holistic and metaphysical community. I'm just trying to uh, get everybody's opinions and everybody's feelings and emotions about what's happening uh, in this uncertain time. For some people, this is, this is a very beautiful awakening moment. For some other people, it's a, it's a struggle and it's hard and they're going through a lot of different things. So it really depends uh, where you fall, uh, you know, in this particular moment in history and in this moment in time. For some people, it's about going back to work and for other people, it's about staying healthy and staying safe and everybody in the right mind has whatever they need for themselves. And so Who's to say who's right? Who's to say who's wrong? We just know that the energies right now are just a little bit different than they were last year. This time, 2020 kind of started off uh, with a bang for a lot of people. And then all of a sudden it was just like, boom. Hello. Oh, welcome to 2020, March. And then, you know, here we are. So, Rochelle, that's kind of the intro today and kind of the feel that I'm, I'm kind of feeling about what's going on. So, but let me, let me ask you a question. How have you been handling all this? especially someone who's uh, into this type of work, the metaphysical uh, work. And wow. Um, well, I kind of feel like uh, the mother put us all in a great big time out. I think we're all sitting in our own corners, kind mm -hmm. of, the truth be told. Um, I think we needed a, a shutdown. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm concerned that um, it, it was, it's, it seems too quiet. I just, I'm, I'm really, kind of shocked that there's not more rumblings than I've heard so far. I'm surprised that people have been so docile in following. I'm grateful, don't get me wrong, I'm grateful that people are um, concerned about their fellow human beings and themselves and we're all 
pretty much staying quarantined, but I think that I'm surprised. I really, to be honest, I'm um, refreshingly re uh, surprised at the level of um, light that I'm seeing everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Small gestures, little things that um, just make a big difference. Little things that I've been seeing, um, connectiveness mm -hmm. of all kinds, but um, I really enjoy um, how everyone has begun to use um, video cameras, um, even to show us that distance is just a, um, for lack of a better way to say it, a figment of our imagination. We're okay. a lot closer to each other than we've ever realized. And I believe that science is, is starting to, sh to disclose that to us, okay. that we are more than just um, time and space beings. I think we're interdimensional. I think that we are uh, full of light and energy and matter and energy don't die. They just change their form. That's basic science. So I think that um, we're creative. We're mm -hmm. collectively creative. And one of the things that I'm most mm -hmm. excited about is that I've been seeing creative solutions to this. I've been seeing people you know, uh, put their thinking cap on, you know, and put their feather in it and just go to work and come up with some good solutions. Mm -hmm. Like um, the car companies making respirators. I mean, that's brilliant. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, the medicine that seems to be helping the antibiotic, um, from what I understand, the manufacturer don donated 500 million doses. Um, I was really happy to hear that. And, and I'm seeing those kinds of things everywhere. And it, it tickles me to see everyone come together. And, uh, you know, I believe in critical mass. So the more of us that are pulling together and raising our vibrations and raising our energy, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I, I, I can't help but think it'll warm us. And since COVID doesn't do well in warm environments, mm -hmm. I uh, think that maybe we might have uh, a little bit of our own um, immune system that we don't even realize. I agree with that. That's a good fact. I, I know that um, I think we're kind of moving from one phase to another phase where in the beginning it was kind of like, well, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And I think now it's kind of like we're moving to this phase like, so what, what can we do uh, to help each other? Uh, not really pointing fingers. I mean, there are always going to be people pointing fingers. So that's just some people are just like that. But I think a majority, a big, vast majority of people are really saying, what can I do? Uh, I don't feel like I'm doing, I can't do a whole lot sitting in my house and, and participate, but just sitting at home participating in one way is also very helpful but i know there's a lot of people who are very um they have that that drive that inner drive to be out and about and doing stuff and but i, I like you said you mentioned a couple of things that car manufacturers are working on ventilators mm -hmm. uh, some um pharmaceutical companies are creating some uh, some types of stuff that they're using for people so yeah i've seen like like the making of the masks the dis distribution of the the make your own homemade masks, the bandanas, those kinds of things, all kinds of things like that have really, uh, just really gave me a glimmer of hope in all of this that um, we, when we have a common goal, we can work together and, and it's about serving others and not being self-centered. And I think that this has really pushed us out of ourselves into helping others and, mm -hmm. and realizing that we we are in this together that that our actions affect other people yeah. and i'm i'm excited about those things i i i think maybe we're maturing a little bit and i'm excited yeah i think we also have to get to a point where we have to face reality too that we can't be in these houses forever and we have Correct. to step we have to step out of them at some point regardless and there's never going to be an ideal situation we hope that ah, we're at a point where we won't be as affected you know you know, as much. And, you know, a lot of people have that herd mentality too, that, you know, the herd becomes more immune when, you know, they step in together. So I'm hoping that the decisions that we're making as a collective, because we actually affect the collective, you know, we affect with our thoughts and our minds and our feelings and our emotions outwardly into the world. So. Well, um, I like, what yeah. I'm, I like, I like it that there, that people are, are being more reflective and taking more responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I, I would like to see that nurtured more. I would like to see people take more personal responsibility for things like, I mean, it sounds so simple. We learned it in kindergarten, 
I just pick up the trash in the hallway. Yeah. If you're walking down the hallway and somebody's left a piece of notebook paper, mm -hmm. or some trash, you just pick it up and put it in the trash can. And yeah. I, those are the simple things that we, and we just have to build on that. A lot of us don't have those skills. Mm -hmm. so, um, there are life skills that we have to teach each other. We have to learn how to ask for help and how to teach each other and be kind to one another when mm -hmm. we don't. I um, have come across a lot of people lately who don't have certain skill sets and I could see them feel embarrassed by that or feeling like mm -hmm. that, like there was something wrong with them because they didn't have a skill set. And I really want people to start, if they have an abundance, like I speak my mind really well. So mm -hmm. I speak for people who maybe can't speak their mind as well, but maybe they can, they're more consistent than I am because I, I can fly off, you know, and, and go traveling. So I think that it's, it, we need to pull from what we, what our abundance and from what we have, our overflow mm -hmm. of, of our gifts and exchange them with each other. And we learn skills that way. We, that's why we have to have community so we can learn from each other. And no, I agree. taking responsibility teaches other people to take responsibility. Um, being, doing maybe the not the easy thing in front of someone, um, you never know who's watching you. You never, like I, my siblings, I was like, I have a responsibility to my siblings growing up to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. So we don't all get in trouble if mom and dad are upset, you know? So we have to live like that. We have to remember that we're in a community, that we're a part of humanity. Mm -hmm. We're not just independent, free mm -hmm. individuals. All that, like, I mean, I think there's a balance between being a part of a group and being independent. And I think that if we can't do both, we're off balance. That's not balance. If we can't be independent and speak our mind, but when the time comes, be a part of the community and give up some of our independence to be a part of that community. You right. know, that's the balance I think that America's looking for, honestly. That's the balance I think that we need. Yeah, and you know, that's that's a good point that you brought up. Uh, you know, growing up, I was one of those kids too that, you know, if I saw, we they, they put it into us, don't throw it out the window, don't put out the forest fire, you know, all that kind of things. And I, I remember doing going to school and all that, that was really ingrained in us. But I do agree with you that uh, we are a family uh, and not all families get along, of course, and not mm -hmm. all family members, you know, see eye to eye. And that's kind of what we are right now in the world. And especially here in America, we, 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 we are dependent on each other, but we don't even notice the dependency because we we think we're so <clears throat> apart from everyone and everything. And so when we feel like uh, oh, I'm my own person, blah, blah, you know, and yeah, you are your own person, but you're also part of something bigger something much more magical, something more power, something very powerful. My neighbor may not, and I may not associate, but you know what? We step out of our doors and we walk down the street and we affect other people's lives by the words and the feelings and the emotions that we share with them. Kind of like uh, you do and I do, you know, when we say something, we come from a place of, uh, you know, a really big, powerful, loving heart. And so I, I believe that every human being is valuable. Every human being on this planet brings something to the table. It's not Absolutely. to discard anybody because just because another person thinks different than you and has different feelings than you do doesn't mean that they're wrong. This, that's just where they're at and that's how they live and that's what they feel. And it's very hard for a lot of people to grasp that sometimes because we've been conditioned that, oh, we got to protect what's ours. You know, if we don't protect what's ours, someone's going to take it from us. It was never ours to begin with. It's, it's part of the Mother Earth. You know, it's part of Sky Father. It's part of all the things that help create us the individuals into this moment in time and so i see what you're saying i totally understand and i and i understand I, i'm not I'm, al I'm in alignment with that i believe that because uh that's how i feel that's why you've come you come to my drum circles <clears throat> people come to drummings people go to events and different things because they want to be around like-minded people because we know that in the world we're we're all in these little pockets of whatever we're in and then sometimes we have to come together to kind of recharge our batteries and and be in community and feel, hey, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? Hugs, kisses, blah, blah, blah. 
drum and then we go back to the world and we share that energy and we go out there and everybody's like man where have you been what have you been up to <laughs> you know that's I, I that's what i sense is the is the most difficult part of this yeah. is the gathering during the separation and i am really um um excited about the ways that we we've, we've creatively found a way around that by like what we're doing here, mm -hmm. um, being a part of a community without having to be in the same physical space. Now I'm sure that things underneath a microscope do all kinds of weird things like what we're doing now, <laughs> but we can't get inside our bodies and see that. But I'm sure that yeah. that if that, uh, you know, this, you know, as above, so below, mm -hmm. if, if that's going on in our body or this is going on in our universe, it's probably going on within our body also. So I think a lot of that's, why I, I think we're going back toward a more homeopathic way of looking at mm -hmm. existing or resonating. Resonates is the best word for me. Um, going back to a more natural way to do that uh, because we've already got the energy inside of us. We, you know, we're so compelled to, to, to take things out externally and put them inside of ourselves mm -hmm. when we should be exploring more of what we can put out there. What can we give um, instead of take in all the time? Sometimes we have to give. And I, you know, I don't know, maybe it's the reason, uh, balance keeps coming up. I mean, just ooh, over and over and over again, uh, the message I'm getting tonight is balance that it's not all or nothing, it's not all white, all black, that there is gray, mm -hmm. that there is um, a, a balancing point, there is a, and I think there's a natural way to find that balance. And I think that we're always trying to find, reinvent the wheel. And I think that our bodies naturally can find that balance. We don't have to, be dependent on external things for our mm -hmm. bodies to work the way they were intended to work. Right. And I think that that's what we're being called back to is a more homeopathic way of looking at it and saying, hey, my body's out of alignment. What's going on with my heart? What's going on with my mind? What's going on in my community? What's going on in my family? What's going on? Do I have rashes? Do, you know, things like that. We we don't spend enough time with our, our bodies. We're always entertainment, all these things to get out of ourselves and not be inside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that coming back to resonance is really the goal um, because when we do that, then we truly can be a part of a community when our energy is such that it will, it will radiate out of us mm -hmm. when it's healthy and it, and, and it, it energizes other people, you know, that way. And it's not something that can be stolen from you. It's like the sunlight, you know, everyone can, can get sun and nobody's taking anybody else's sun away. There's enough sunlight for everyone. Yeah. And so I think that we need to remember that where our bodies are concerned, there's enough. We are enough. We are enough. Just as we are, as we exist, we are enough. Do we need to eat? Yes. Do we need to do these? Yes, we need to do all those things. But our essential being, our, our, the part of us that resonates here in the physical realm, we're enough. We're good and we're enough. And that's the message I'd like most people to hear. Um, maybe some people don't need to hear that they're good enough. Maybe their actions aren't good right now. But <laughs> I, I, I tend to go to those that are the most needy or the most hurting the most the, those that need the love the most mm -hmm. um and sometimes the hardened people need it the most but they they tend to need another kind of love than, <laughs> than you know my poofy poofy stuff excuse me yeah no i hear you i hear you there's um there's a lot of uh there's a lot going on right now that we can't even put our finger on uh what's happening behind closed doors you know and a lot of people are going through uh, a metamorphosis of sorts. And even yeah, Priscilla, I was just thinking of a chrysalis. That's yeah, exactly what yeah, I just thought that we're all inside the dark of the chrysalis. You, mm -hmm. you know, I've come across some really sparkly things in here. I don't know about you, but 
I've come across some sparkly things. There's some gooey stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> All kinds of things going on in this, this, I, um, risk to, at, politically speaking, um, I've been saying a couple of things for a while. The thing I'm most concerned about is that I feel like the Congress and the presidency have lost their power. And I feel like the Supreme Court's got a lot now and we need to be mm -hmm. watching it. And I need, I was saying that before this happened, but I'm more, I'm even more concerned about that right now. I really mm -hmm. want people to be civic minded and to be aware, remember their, um, you know, uh, their civic uh, in lessons in school and take responsibility and vote mm -hmm. and be a participant in the community that they're living in. Um, I would like to see a lot more local government personally um, because I feel like I, I could be more effective. Like I, I feel like we could all be more effective where we are, of course, always than we could be at a distance. I'm not saying, of course, that like things at a distance aren't important. I'm just saying that it just makes sense for me to do something where I am. I oh, absolutely. Say, I had an absolutely. uncle say, grow where you're planted. And so two years ago, I had a, I had a vision and I was told that the United States of America was going to get into a fight. And that if it lost, biological warfare would be released in the time of Libra. Hmm. Interesting. And um, I, that's what I think happened. I think that's exactly what happened. And um, But I think that I was told that. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person who was given a heads up on this mm -hmm. um, to prepare people. Um, I think that people were... I think people are... We're, we're in a state of expectation. We didn't know what was coming, but mm -hmm. so many of the people that I interacted with who are spiritual all had that sense of expectation. We didn't know what was coming, but we felt like something was really on yeah, the you could horizon. Feel it. Yeah. I don't think any of us really expected it to be as negative as it was, but we all had that sense. that, mm -hmm. oh. And I think a lot of us um, feel that it's going to be better when it starts back up. I think it's it 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 did the trick. It calmed us all down. Yeah. I really do. You know, yeah. Just it. You know, the like I said, the equivalent of being put in a timeout. You know, sometimes you just need to be held close. You know, um, mm -hmm. to calm down. And I that's what we've done. We've all come home to calm down. Right. And I. Um, and when bears hibernate, yeah. they come <laughs> out with the energy that they need because they rest. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Where's the food? Where's mm. the food? <laughs> I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They come out with a new hunger. They come out with a new vigor. They 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 got to, you know, just because they get a little skinny, you know, while they're, they put on all the weight. And, and they lose the rest and, and they rested. rested and they're, and they're and hungry to learn and their energy is stronger mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i mean if you ever want to learn anything about yourself study bear medicine bear medicine is a very powerful medicine i agree I, and I, you I, know I, right now i think um i think we're starting to even though we've only been in this is only like a, a couple months but i think those couple months have been very crucial for a lot of growth for a lot of people um there's a lot of people who um will probably stay in similar habits and there's going to be people who are going to move out of habits that they had before and the people who were in these kind of habits might move. it's hard to say it's hard to say until you start actually talking and meeting people how they handle the situation and i know one thing just watching my personal timeline and facebook page uh how things have metamorphosed you know and changed and and who posts who doesn't post who why people aren't posting it how they're posting, what they're posting has changed very quickly, even in a matter of just a couple of weeks. Um, there was a lot of fear-based stuff. I mean, there's still some of it out yeah. there. There was a lot of anger. There was a lot of confusion. Now, um, not saying that it's not there, but it's a little bit different now. It's it's going into different categories that you don't res like. Like if I don't resonate with it, I don't see it. Right. I guess my good example is a good example. If I, if it doesn't resonate with my energy, those people aren't connecting with me, even though we're still friends. They're just kind of in their own little camps doing and and sharing with what, everyone, whatever. 
Well, I think part of what's happened is that we're going to come back to what's essential, what matters to us. That's mm -hmm. what's happened is the distractions have stopped and we're able to be, I think, more honest with ourselves, you know, spend a little more time with our own truth. We can get so caught up in being outside and being in the world. We forget our own truth. We forget mm -hmm. how to go inside and just be, be still and, and be nourished by just time spent with ourselves mm -hmm. because we spend the most time with ourselves right yeah like, i don't know let me look consciously spending time with i ourselves. think you're right <laughs> yeah i was just looking behind me yeah, right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> very exactly and I, I think this is kind of like uh kind of forced us off to spend a little more time and you know with god mm. I, I however you want to define that Mm -hmm. I that's think that's point. the most important thing is to is to connect back to that sense of God within that sense of being a, a creator and and a created being both um, and connecting to that again and realizing that that's the source of all of our energy and all of our power and um, so like I said, it's kind of like being put in time out by your mom, you know, just like, you know, you, know, you need you need to take a, a look at your behavior. You need to um, take a deep breath. You need yeah. to uh, think about what you're doing. You need to, all those things that I think that's what we've been doing. I think that's what's happened. Some of us saw right away our mistake and immediately we got out of time out and started doing what we were supposed to be doing, you know? Some right. of us, if maybe we didn't learn our lesson. Maybe it's going to take another time out. Yeah. I don't know yet. I know for me, I've learned a lot about serving other people mm -hmm. and, and not being so concerned about how I might feel at any given time, but being more concerned about whether somebody has something to eat or whether somebody has slept well or whether somebody's getting... Um, I, you know, just FaceTime with somebody they love, even uh, mm -hmm. simple stuff. You know, I've been more concerned about those things. I've been reaching out. I've been connecting with people I haven't seen in a long time. Just said, Hey, in the middle of all this, just know you're on my mind. I think about you. I care about you. What happens to you matters to me. Stay in touch. Even if yeah. I can't be with those people, letting them know that they're in my energy, they're in my prayer, they're in my, my, my sphere and, yeah, and you, you, you've done that you've done that with me you've reached out to me to see if i was okay and i appreciate that and vice versa i reached out to you um it, it, it goes a long way believe it or not Absolutely. It, does, it, it goes a long way just to even say hey just hi just saying hi you know don't even have to explain anything just the fact the near fact that that you even i came across your your mind for the slight moment means a lot so, you know, don't discount the power of the high, you know, hey, yeah. hi. Well, it's simple. <laughs> it's simple. I, uh, I, I had a journal um, and a friend of mine wrote in it, if you smile at me, I will understand because that is something everyone does everywhere in the same language. It's, right. a, it's a lyric by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. And I just love that, the that it, it's a simple thing, but that it, it, it can affect everyone, that it, 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 it's so simple, you know, and that I, I'm, I'm coming back to that, to, 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 to essential things, um, little things that have multi uses, have multiple. Um, and I think it, maybe it's a, it's a, a spirit of recycling, even like I'm uh, becoming more and more aware of not throwing things away, of reusing things, of, or of giving things away or of uh, using things in a different way. Those kinds, mm -hmm. I have gotten, I've become more aware of that, not even on purpose. It's become, it's just something that has become lately. I don't know why, but I mean, I think that, but I, I'm noticing that that's happening in my life in lots of areas. Um, my music choices, mm -hmm. um, whereas I might, like put in more a more trendy song to sing along. Like, no, I think I'll go for Simon and Garfunkel again. It's a standard and it'll take me all over the range of emotion I need to yeah. go through, you know? But I've learned, that's what I'm saying. Like there are some things in my life like that that, it, that are getting more essential, that, yeah. that are 
are That's getting awesome. more more of a priority. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm finding that just focusing on those little priorities, it has multiple uses. It does many, many things for me. It's not just whatever I might be picking it up for, whatever tool it might be. See what I mean? Like, oh, I get it. like honesty is a great tool. It's a great tool to use. You never know how much it can affect your world, yourself, self-honesty, how freeing it can be, how, um, how many avenues of interest it opens up, um, the different kinds of friends you'll make with mm -hmm. honesty. You never know how a tool, a spiritual tool, can be utilized until you use it. And I'm learning to pick the more essential ones because they are more, they, they have more variety to them. Sure. So that's uh, one of the things that I've been um, doing as far as um, sharing with other people uh, to focus on a principle, one, one, when you don't know what to do, when there's so many options, there's so much to do, there's so much work to be done. Right. You just focus on one thing, one principle that's outside of yourself to focus on, you'll find that it, it becomes more usable. Like, that's not the right word. I feel awful for not being able to find the right word. But, um, <laughs> hey, we get we get what you're saying. Like, it's more practical. You, practical. Like, you know, you can use it in other different places. Mm -hmm. yeah, and instead of all the extras, all the extras. So I'm focusing more spiritually on the simpler stuff, like just prayer or just meditation, one or the other. One, of course, is, is, is requesting, the other is listening, or one is speaking, one is listening. Mm -hmm. um, focusing on one or the other or setting them apart to see which one is, is helping me more in any given week or month. True. Um, whether I'm being called more to prayer or action or um, separateness or whether I'm being called to meditation and um, um, into dance. Sometimes meditation calls me into dance or into singing. Mm -hmm. it, and I listen when I do those things. That's how I listen. So I think that we need to be doing both, but we need to be more conscious of when we're doing them both. Right. Be, be more conscious of when we're listening versus when we're asking. When we're this, is, this is true. This is when we're giving. This is true. This is very true. For those of you who are just tuning in right now, this is my friend, uh, Rochelle Phillips. She's here sharing with me her, um, her thoughts, her feelings, her emotions. She's a, a local mystic here in Columbus, Ohio. She does all kinds of uh, readings, all kinds of, you know, you name it. She'll, she'll explain a little bit what she does here in a minute. But you're listening to with insights radio.com uh, Iggy Garcia live episode 101 and we're kind of talking about what's been kind of going on in the world we've been kind of going through uh, a change and going through this um, transformation of sorts for some people um, I'll take the back I won't say it sorts we're transforming and we're changing period how you're changing well that's an in, by individual by individual basis how that works and what that looks like so uh Thank you for tuning in and we're going to share now a little bit about what you do and what you bring. I see this book on your, in front of you and, yeah, it, um, and I'm curious about what's in it. it. It's it almost looks like a book of uh, recipes and it's, maybe it's some. It's actually Women Who Run With the Wolves <laughs> by Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Okay, cool. She is my nice. hero <clears throat> in life. She's my hero. And nice. I found this book, uh, I don't know, 20. Five years ago, a friend mm -hmm. of mine gave it to me and I read the bibliography and it made me cry. No, It was called the, the Education of a Young Wolf Pup. And her words are my language. It's, she speaks my language. She speaks to my soul. And every time I open it up, I am pulled into the flow. I don't need, that's the only way I can explain it. And her words resonate with me and I, I think they resonate for other people. Um, to, uh, what I do is I just pray and I say, I'd like, I'd like some guidance. I open the book. It never fails. I've already been given instruction or it's just the next right step. What I read. And, um, 
I've been reading, like I said, I've been reading this book, but I have never been in this chapter. Oh, okay, cool. Craziest thing. It's the only one. And the crazy part of it is, is that I'm a singer. Okay. And the chapter is shadowing the deep song. Hmm. And what I read today, I, I would just like to read it because I think. Sure, um, please. Okay. Um, says the wild woman has been shadowing human women for years. Now we see a glimpse of her. Now she is invisible again. Yet she makes so many appearances in our lives and in so many different forms. We feel surrounded by her images and urges. She comes to us in dreams or in stories for she wants us to see who we are and if we are ready to join her yet. If we but look at the shadows we cast, we see that they are not two-legged human shadows, but the lovely shape of something free and wild. We are meant to be permanent residents, not just tourists in her territory, for we are derived from that land. It is our motherland, our inheritance at the same time. There is a saying from medieval times that if you are in a descent and pursued by a great power, and if this great power is able to snag your shadow, then you too shall become a power in your own right. And so uh, what that says to me is that if you're seeking, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you are seeking has been seeking you. Yes. And all of those things that you admire in other people, those qualities that you like in other people, you possess them. We have a saying, if you spot it, you got it. Now, usually that applies to things we don't like in somebody, but it's also true in the positive. Yes, if, it is. if you see somebody and they have leadership qualities that you really admire, if you take a look at yourself, I bet you, you find those same qualities in yourself. Don't, you know, water seeks its own level. Mm -hmm. And what this said to me today is that I was created to be at home inside myself. That every room in me is created just for me. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it, and whatever it is that I naturally feel drawn to, that's where I'm going to feel that support and that nurture. So if you find comfort in reading a newspaper, read a newspaper. You'll probably mm -hmm. be most, most likely contacted from that which is calling you. Yes. Wherever you go, look for God wherever you go. Look for that which is eternal in everything you do and wherever you go. Because it's always with us. It's not somewhere we go, we carry it with us. Right. Wherever you go, there you are, right? Yeah, so, this is true. I, I think that what she's saying is, is that being at home on the earth, being here, being with our families, being at home, that's our natural state. That's where mm -hmm. we're supposed to be. We're supposed to enjoy ourselves, our world, our lives. We're here to enjoy ourselves. There's been so much so much focus on the negative i i really really would love to see people start focusing on what's right with us because i think we're all doing a really good job right now under the circumstances oh yeah and i think that we are <clears throat> being drawn spiritually because that's what we want that's what we're longing for mm -hmm. to be filled with something that isn't temporary because yeah. resonating with the spirit is permanent it never, it's, it's never going to not be there. That's where we come from. That's what we're made of. Like we're made of stardust to stardust will return. That's right. That's correct. You know, mm -hmm. soil and stardust. That's what we're made of. That's what we're going to be attracted to. So keep yeah. that in mind. Like attracts mm -hmm. like. So when you leave and you feel yourself being pulled in a different direction, it's okay. My message to all the light workers that I've been interacting with is that when this is over, so many of us are going to find ourselves doing different work. Mm. We're not going to stop doing what we were doing before, but I just sense that we're all going to be um, laying the foundations for different work. We're all going to like switch gifts or uh, switch directions or 
uh, take things in a new direction. That's what I see for you um, after this. I see you um, maybe not so much uh, public as much anymore. I see you being more behind the scenes, but I think you're going to be working on some projects that are really important to you. I see you going in some different, I'm not saying that you're not going to continue doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be down, downplayed to, to, to another calling to something else that you're being pulled to. So, and I, I see us all being retooled, like the manufacturer, the car manufacturers redoing themselves and making ventilators. I see those of us that are doing light work being pulled into different areas, maybe the same ones we're in, but a little further. Maybe we're not going to be doing the groundwork anymore. Other people are going to take over and we're going to be doing more cutting edge stuff. Right. I see us all um, being visionaries and being really future oriented and, and coming together and doing some really neat stuff, different stuff than we were doing before. Absolutely. You might find yourself if you were um, into herbs or... <clears throat> Or, or body health, you might find yourself being drawn to crystals mm -hmm. or to music therapy. Uh, this is what I'm seeing, that people are going to start using different artistic or creative gifts, different outlets for their spirituality. People are going to change. You, you might find people changing their religions after this. That's what I think, mm -hmm. that I see for people, the positiveness is going to open up so many different areas the change of our perspective is going to open up places that need workers, that are going to need energy, that are going to need educators. And I see us all going in different directions than what we've been doing up to, the, to this point. Yeah, Not necessarily I agree with you. Out of the, the metaphysical community, but in different areas within the metaphysical community. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with that statement because I've been kind of shouting that out too a little bit. And it's funny that you read from that chapter about shadows um mm. shadows shadows get a bad rap because we put bad uh, we put negative connotations on shadows and shadows doesn't mean what shadow always means because when the sun shines upon a, a, a group of trees it casts shadows so it can comfort you with some coolness and keep you, you absolutely know, in, in shade. so yeah the shadows inside of us also are, are sort of the things that we hide that we're afraid to share and now and sometimes we're embarrassed, you know, and, you know, so we, we it's kind of our judgment upon ourselves. But also, I think when, remember, shadows can't exist without light, right? Exactly. That's, they don't, yeah, they can't, right, they right. can't. Exactly. Right. They, shadow does not exist without light. The light's right. always there and the shadows are always there. And that's kind of who we are. And that's why I'm saying shadow isn't bad or good or light isn't right. bad or good. It's, it, it's it just perspective, is. perspective, right? The yes, light perspective. The way... Because you may be in a hot summer day going, well, I need some shadow. I need, I need to get in the, in the shade. You know, yeah. our life is the same way. Sometimes we have to step into the shade of our existence because life can be overbearing and be hard. And so we have to step back for a little bit and just kind of regather. And I think you're right. I think also we're making room for other people who are awakening, who are, uh, who are coming into their gifts because they've been in the shadows, kind of like going, oh, I don't know if I want to do this, yeah. you know? And now all of a sudden they're like, I'm going to do it. But here's the cool part. It's going to be kind of an accelerated push. It's going to be one yeah, of those things where that's where people... why that's why I said that about like that's why I I read that because that's what I sense that people are going to find that they're going to be drawn to something that might be new, but it fits them so much better mm -hmm. because they're they've been shadowing. They have, that which you're seeking is seeking you too. That which you're looking for is looking for you also. How the, true that statement the, is, huh? Pardon? How true that statement is. Yes, yes. And so I think that if what we're we're all trying to do in this is, is take a look at the more negative side of ourselves and say, let's transmute those. I think that that's going to open us all up. That's the thing that I see is that um, it's not going to be as rigid anymore. I think mm -hmm. that that what it's funny you said that because that shadows they're not as rigid. They're not as clear. They're not as defined. They're shadows. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, um, they're, they're, they're not meant to be clear. They're not, they're meant to be opaque, right? You know, they're meant, Absolutely. They're not meant to be, did I say that right? <clears throat> but, no, I know what you're saying. I get totally understand. Right. 
because if you think about it, emotions are like that. Um, mm -hmm. Spiritual things are like that. Sometimes it's hard to hear a truth, a spiritual truth, just roll sharp. But if it's softer, if it doesn't have as many edges to it, it kind of comes in slower and you go, oh yeah. And you find yourself turn away from something that was negative instead of it being a ripping and being harsh. It's like, it's a slow moving change. And all of a sudden you find yourself, oh wow, this is where I wanted to be anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I step away from something that doesn't fit me and I move into something. And that's kind of what shadows are like. Yeah. They, they're slow. Yeah. If you ever want to study shadow work, read Batman. Batman, oh, Batman, the character of Batman is a perfect example of being in the light and the shadow and, and working through both those processes. Because by day, he's billionaire extraordinaire, you know, helping the world. And then at night, he. He has no has no superpowers, but you know he works through the shadows and uses the shadows as uh, as a cover for his um, his shortcoming, but which is also his strength because that's right. something that he's able to harness onto and put instill fear uh, that he felt as a child onto those who were doing wrong. So it's a very good analogy, and you know, people I'm, who write comic books actually, and stuff, yeah, I'm going to actually enjoy that. I think I'm going to work with that. I like that a lot. <laughs> that's I think I'm going to. My little brain's gonna jump on that. I like that. That's fun. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, this is what I'm, what my shamanic teachers taught me that the shadows can also play into your favor. They're not necessarily bad. Things aren't always as they seem, as we portray them. Sometimes we portray them because we don't have any answer or any definition or any memory or experience of that. So we can only express it in a way that is uh, unexplainable. Sometimes, like this pandemic is very unexplainable for people because. We've never been in a pandemic. Nobody here that I'm aware of, unless you're 100 and some years old, has been in a pandemic of some sort. Right. At this caliber, this level, we're part of history. We're part of something that is unique only to our generation. Those of us who are alive right now can speak about this when great grandchildren or grandchildren say, hey, pops, tell me about you know the pandemic of 2020. And you're going, I don't know where to start. So what happened? Well, right. we no one really, right. nobody really knows how it started, but we had to do this. We had to do that. And I was better for it. And I came out of it stronger and I came out of going, wow, yeah, I feel that it was hard. You know, we forget because remember, could you imagine the plague, the story of the plague, people who were in the plague? I mean, millions of people died during the plague. And so when these people died, no one really knows the true story of what these people did when they were inside their homes and, and locked away because they didn't want to die. And we kind of have that same storyline. We have right. so many stories and so many things to share with the world about what we've been doing. That's why people are on TikTok, on YouTube. That's why people are singing off their balconies. That's why people are expressing themselves. That's why Mother Earth has cleansed herself. And that's why uh, you see dolphins in places you haven't seen them in a long time. That's why you see jellyfish in places you haven't seen in a long time. It's because we're all in this together. We're all in this, this higher vibration that we can't understand because we think, we think that it's it's bad, it's terrible, it's going to kill us. Blah, blah. No, it's a higher calling, it's a higher spirit cleansing. It's Mother Earth and Sky Father unifying together, clearing and making way to put things back into some type of balance, some type of uh, normalcy uh, for Mother Earth. Not for us, not but for Sky Father and for Earth Mother. Earth Mother has a way for her to clean and flush away the things that don't serve her because she's a living sentient being she's alive as you and i are talking to each other on this zoom application and this facebook application and she's talking through all all every single human being and she channels every single one of us she channels her feelings her emotions her strengths her weaknesses everything through us right. sometimes when you don't know where that energy comes from or why you feel in a certain way because mother earth is vibrating through you right so i saw and some cards i saw some cards pop up there you got some i did i was going to uh <laughs> the way that um, I've been doing this for a while, I had a, I, I got this book, I was very interested in tarot, <laughs> my story as it were, but I, I've been a tarot reader for like going on 30 years now. Um, um, I was raised in a fundamentalist Pentecostal church. So mm. um, this was a no, no in uh, my religious upbringing. So it took me a while to get to, to where I am today. Um, but I read a book, I, the, 
the typical Rider Waite tarot deck, the images were always very garish to me and I didn't like them. Mm-hmm. But I, I got a deck of Native American, um, Emma Sam's um, animal cards. And I began to use them. And then I began to do readings for family and friends. And I discovered nice. that I, I had a gift and that I, you know, could predict things and awesome. said things. And so, um, and I had friends say, well, why don't you try tarot? But I, I was always put off by them. And then I had a dream that I went to see an, an old gypsy woman <laughs> and she turned over these cards and I only woke up when I woke up, I only remembered one of them, Okay. but it had hearts and ballerinas and roses on it. And it was just exquisitely beautiful. And I woke up and I said, and by the way, it was Halloween day. And I woke up and I said, I'm either going to find those cards or I'm going to make those cards. Wow. Nice. I went the next day to my friend Psyche had a bookstore called fly by night. And I went there and I bought a deck of cards. And when I got them to the car, I opened them up. And they were in cellophane, three stacks of cellophane. Okay. When I turned over the third, it was the card in my dream. The third stack, it was the card in my dream. Wow. So I had found it and I knew that this was what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, I said all that to say I have come back to actually liking the Rider Waite deck probably more than any other because of the symbols and they're easier to read Mm -hmm. um, today for me. Um, but I still enjoy the deck that I found originally. Um, and over the years I've only used, you know, a tarot deck and then I have, um, a set of angel cards that I like to use. And, um, I was just going to do one actually just for you. I was, um, uh, just going to do a, an angel card, um, for you, uh, for the week. And then I was just going to throw out, uh, three cards, um, for your, um, um, career, actually, that's what I was told to throw out for you. Like, okay. so that's what I was going to do. No holds bar. All right. All right. Good. <laughs> uh, oh, you're what looking, I you're... ask is that, um, as I shuffle, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to shuffle these cards, angel cards that you, um, connect with your guardian angels. Those that came in with you, that can never leave you, that love you and are only here to help you on your path. Connect with them. They have a message and okay. I'll, you know, I believe it'll come to you. The the message that you most can hear, the one that'll resonate with you the most, okay. um, the expression that will register. That's always what I like about the angel cards. They seem to 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 touch hearts rather than minds. They touch sure. hearts. Not heart. So um, <laughs> here we go. Um, so. retreat retreat okay uh that's not surprising is it not really we talked about bear mm-hmm. we're in quarantine um the message of this card though always is the oak tree grows very slowly very very slowly but it is strong because it does grow so slowly okay. and um a message that your influence cannot be felt at this point that you Mm -hmm. need to rest and heal before your influence can be positive and affect other people. You need to take some downtime to care yourself. Okay. Okay? Yes. And that's your angel card. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do the tarot and see what, what comes up for that. And, um, you know, there are levels. Um, the first, I'm just going to show you this. It just came up in the shuffle. Okay. Um, it, it came up today and I was looking at it and I didn't know why. Uh, it's funny that I'm sure it's the moon card. Okay. And, you know, the moon card's a lot about shadows, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, this is what I see. Um, your, your enterprise is going to open up it's going to be more worldwide. It's not going to be as small. I see you traveling more. Um, and I also see three separate opportunities for you. Three. Uh, that, 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 that you need to contemplate. 
Um, and, and in order to achieve them, you're going to have to journey. Okay. They're going to definitely require journeying. Um, but I don't think to a destination that you're used to, uh, perhaps maybe a destination that you're unfamiliar with. I, in the past, I, 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 you, I can, th this is a new, new place than where you've been in the past. This is a new environment for you. Okay. Um, and you're, I'm being told that your, the past environment was perfect for you for that time. It was absolutely perfect. This new one is just as good for you, but there are options for you that you did not have in the past that you now have. Like your, um, it's just opened up. Things have shifted and you're going to have not one choice, but two, like of, of, of what, what you have now, but two more alternatives, not just two alternatives. You're going to have three okay. that you can choose from. So, um, and it's going to come from generosity, that of yourself and other people. And it's going to require you to work with others. It's not going to be a singular work for you anymore. I don't see you working singularly. I think you need to go inside for that retreat, for that downtime. But when you come back out, I see you working more with others, whereas you've been solo up to this point. I see you really, really moving it more to others and um, working, um, helping other people build foundations. I, I see you um, you know when you plant a tree mm -hmm. and you have to put that stuff around the base of it? Yeah, that's what I see you doing. That's okay. that's the image that's coming to my mind. And you get the three of wands. Three of wands, okay. And that's it. And the immediate outcome, and those are your three choices, right? Yes. Um, and, you know, at the base of a little tiny tree, they have to put all that mulch to keep mm -hmm. the roots safe. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be putting mulch around people's trees, around their foundations. That's what I see you doing. Adding the fertilizer of new growth. So maybe there's going to be three businesses that you're just going to be, be doing groundwork or you're going to be nurturing um, the beginnings of new businesses for other people. I don't see it so much as your individual work. I see you moving towards helping other people with theirs. Okay. But also... This pulls you into a different kind of community and you're going to be learning, you're going to be, uh, you're gonna learn differently. You're, the, what you're going into is, is going to teach you new skills, but your how you've received up to this point is gonna be different. You're gonna get from different places. Whereas your flow was more singular before, I'm sensing that what you're coming into is um, more of a, a cornucopia of things, like a, a, a whole bunch of different kinds of resources that you're going to be drawing from. I don't, I see you, um, what's the, I, it's a business word, I don't know. Um, like synergy of sorts? No more, I was thinking more along the lines of like, you're going to go into different areas, although it's going to be the same product, it's okay. going to have three different uses, three different new uses. That's yeah. what I'm seeing with you, that um, you're going to, you're going, this three is going to become a six. You got the six of pentacles, which <laughs> is somewhere in the, in the future. So the three is going to like explode and your energy is going to come from a whole bunch of different places instead of a, a singular source. So you're going to franchise. Oh, okay. That's right. what I'm seeing. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, not a franchise necessarily, no, I but I see mm -hmm. you having different things going on and not just one thing. And I see you working with other people more, but I, I see you doing mentor, a lot of mentoring, mm -hmm. a lot of mentoring. Um, that's what I see. And, also, there's something about a, a past building, like a building of so, some sort from the past. Okay. Um, 
that at the time was very, very negative, but the, I'm being told to tell you that it's very, very, it was important. It was an important lesson for you uh, that you learned some, even though it was a painful lesson to learn about this building, whatever it was, it, 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 it prepared you for what you're going to be doing and it gave you skills that you're going to be using later and to not project that onto your future. It's, it was for a purpose, but to let it go. That, that what you needed from that is already integrated and you will take it with you into the future. You no don't need to focus on it or to bring it up. Okay. Whatever that I know, was. I know that building. Okay. All right. So uh, that's what I see. I mean, that's, that's um, I see you slowing down, going in, mm -hmm. pausing, and coming back out and having, um, you're going to have solid direction. There's, there's a lot of sunlight around this. There's a lot of uh, clarity and um, synthesize. That's what I was trying to say. Synthesized. That's okay. what I was looking for. Your interests, your, um, what you have to offer is going to synthesize in different places. Hmm. Does that mean, instead of all being in one place, they're going to. Yes. Yes. That, I, um, I get it. Diversify. Diversify. You're, you're going to diversify. That's what that's what I see for you in the future. Your skills and what you're doing is going to diversify, and you're going to be working on helping other people build their their uh, walks. Their I don't know how else to say it. Yes, I hear their you. Ministries, their paths, their walks, their shamanism. That's what I see you doing in the future. Awesome. That's a beautiful read. That's very powerful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate that because I can feel that and I, I kind of know some of the story already, you know, and some of the story is already playing out. So that's, that's pretty massive and pretty uh, significant to me. So there's a lot of sunshine. Don't be surprised if where you're going has a lot of sunshine, lots of sunshine. I see not so, not so green, more desert like sunshine, but lots of sunshine. Okay. okay. That makes sense. All right, good. So, good. so how, how do people find you? How, how do we get a hold of you? How do we get readings from you? So what's the so best way to get my, a hold of you? I have a, a readings by Rochelle Facebook page, but I have never used it. It's okay. not gotten very many visits. It's not really set up that great. So my phone, I, you know, um, call me and we'll set up a reading okay. if you'd like. All um, right. So, and very good uh, my cards are out there a lot of people okay um contact me that way but my my i do you want me to just say my phone number now I um it? you can put it i can what is what is your number here and i'll put it on the on the conversation okay it's 614-483-7009 it's the only stable thing in my life my phone number's been the same for like seven zero eighteen years i'm a long time my what phone number's the only thing that's normal what was the last four digits again? Oh, I'm sorry. 614-483-7009. It's the only stable thing in my life. <laughs> okay. Even more than my, you know, <laughs> residence, my phone. So we have a few minutes left. Um, any closing thoughts? It's something you want to share with uh, our listeners who are tuned in on Facebook? Yeah. A lot of us here stay home. Um, and homelessness is a huge problem in this country. And right now I want you to, if you would say a prayer for all of those people who don't have a safe place to sit, even for people who don't have toilet paper, they don't have a place to go to the bathroom for people who don't have water for people who don't have food because they're all us. And if they're out there and they're alone, they need us. They need our energy and our strength. And it's the simple stuff. Um, uh, if you see somebody and they look hungry or like they haven't had a bath, give them some money. I don't care if they drink with it. Oh, so what? It's you giving that matters. You saying that's a problem that I can help give. It doesn't, if that's what you've got to give in that moment, then give that what you've got to give, give to those people who don't have, you know, um, and don't worry about getting taken. Let them take you. It's okay. You'll be repaid later. Let, you know, take, let people take advantage of you right now. If that's what your fear is, you know, just go ahead and let them do it. Just give to people, help people out. And remember that um, there are a lot of people who are homeless and they can't go to the hospitals right now. 
and they can't go to the shelters. And so if you've got things to extra, just leave it on your front porch or put it, put it in your front yard or put a bag for the homeless, take it or whatever you got. I mean, you know, uh, coffee cans, simple things to help people. If you've got extra or you know somebody who needs it, give it away. Give what you've got away. Give what you have. That's my message. Be aware that there are a lot of people who don't have homes to go home to, and they might be sick. If you if you go to the store and you can buy an extra bottle of Tylenol or a toothbrush or toothpaste, do that. Awesome. Give it away. Find place. And there's and there's just so mm -hmm. many places you can give it away. You know, give 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 give. Remember that there are people who don't have homes, and if you can participate, open your garage, open your backyard. Let somebody throw a tent up. This is horrible. It's a horrible mm -hmm. time to be out in the in the elements and, and alone. You know, yes. so I just want to encourage you to reach out. Very good. Awesome. Rochelle, thank you very much for, for coming me. on and sharing your wisdom with us and your heart. And and thank you for the beautiful reading from, from myself personally. And, um, you know, I can't thank you any more than I can thank you like I am right now because um, I'm trying to give back to my community in however way I can and you know I know you give a lot you share a lot with people and I uh, just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming on and being here with me tonight thank you for having me yeah. I appreciate it. it was a joy to spend time with you awesome all right so folks thanks for Rochelle and we'll see you a little bit uh, we'll talk after I'll give you a buzz a little bit later all right all right thank you so I'm putting you on mute here. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed um, your time here with with me and sharing the messages that we we received from um, our guests who have uh, their own personal wisdom, their own personal you know waik and their own personal call to from spirit and from Mother Earth to share what's on their heart, what's in in their spirit and their soul. Uh, Rochelle is one of many people who I know who have gifts, who are expanding, who are learning, who want to share with you. And, and I suggest that you track her down and look her up, Rochelle Phillips, and friend her on Facebook. Tell her you listen to the show and you want to get to know her a little bit better. Um, and then, you know, let it progress from there. But um, every week I try to bring at least somebody on who's in our community. So if you're in our community and you want to come on and share your your knowledge, your gifts with us and the feelings that you have and the things that spirits called you to share, then come on, just give me a buzz. Let me know. And I'll get you on because I think that's the way we learn. That's the way we are able to help one another to expand and to grow right now. This expansion is happening so quickly and so fast that um, it could be exhausting. Some of us are very tired. Some of us are very uh, energized and some of us uh, don't know which way to turn. We're like this, you know, it's just because that's just how the energy is right now. It's not that it's chaotic. What's chaotic is kind of like when you hit the anthill. You know, when spirit and Mother Earth hit the anthill, what happens? All the ants go, what is going on? They're all going, la, la, da, 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 da. I don't know. I, I think it was thunder. I don't know. It was, I think it was a tornado. I don't know. We don't know, but something hit our anthill. Our anthill has been hit, and it's not the same. We have to rebuild. <clears throat> Even the, the ants will never rebuild the anthill the same exact way ever again. And neither will you rebuild the same way after this pandemic and this scare and this thing that we're going through, you will come into a, a new existence of yourself, a new feeling and new emotions and all kinds of amazing things will happen to you. And so, you know, it's not about looking for signs. The signs are right smack in front of you. And sometimes we don't see them because we're too busy worrying about the anthill that got wiped out. Uh, just start building the pieces, pick up one little grain of sand at a time or brick or building, whatever, whatever your metaphor is going to be. And just start to place them in a place where you can look at them and then reconstruct it differently. Or you might step back and go, nah, I'm going to step away from that. That doesn't serve me anymore. You'll know. You'll know exactly what you need to do. But um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and being here. Uh, tomorrow, virtual drum circle. I think our virtual drum circles are going to slow down here pretty quick if we start to go back into our old uh, ways of uh, sharing physically and in front of each other. The shows will continue in the evenings uh, as much as possible. Uh, we will be sharing on Friday. We'll have um, 
I'll be here live. Maybe I'll have a guess. Maybe I won't. Regardless, I'll, I'll be here. But, uh, you know, go out there. Be the best version of yourself that you can be. Uh, always improving. Always expanding. Always sharing. Always loving. Coming from a place of uh, heart. Coming from a place of gratitude. Irisiqui. You know, that's that's the Quechua word for gratitude. Giving thanks to that. Ho'oponopono. Giving thanks and understanding. Bringing in the energies that collectively heal us and that's what Ho'oponopono is okay namaste i see what's in you what's in me vice versa you know and then matakuyasin you know all my relations you know a ho giving thanks it's good to be here you know we're we're acknowledging that you know being here is the best we can have sometimes in that particular moment and let's do make the best of it so it's good to be here it's good to be with you it's good to be together and it's good to share this energy good to be able to be able to share this knowledge. Um, some of you are going to come out doing some amazing things and doing some things that will transcend and, and will help humanity. And some of you will come out of this transcending and helping yourself to prepare yourself to get into the places where you need to be to help humanity. We're all at different levels. It doesn't make it wrong or right. It just is what it is. We are where we are. Some of us are destined to just do some amazing things. And some of us are destined to help other people do amazing things. So it's neither wrong or right. It just is what it is. And when your role changes, your role will change multiple times. And you know what? Look for the magic in everything that you do. Look for the magic in the people that are around you. Look for the magic in your heart. Look for the magic because you are the magic. You are the magic that makes things expand. You are the magic that makes the world go round. And the magic is in all of us when we channel it in a positive, loving way. And when we understand that we are human beings and we're going to make mistakes and that we're not going to get it right all the time. And so we shouldn't beat ourselves up too badly when we don't get it right. Just get back up, pull up your bootstraps, you know, and say, back at it again. Let's see what happens. I guarantee you, never give up, never quit, never stop. It's good to be here. Keep drumming, keep singing, keep dancing, keep reading, keep uh, reading your cards, your stones, whatever you do, just keep doing it. Keep expanding your mind, your heart, your spirit, and your soul. Ask for guidance from a higher self. Ask guidance from God, great spirit, mother earth, whatever you are in alignment with, ask it to help you and gather and put you in the right frame of mind. And I personally guarantee you that you will feel a thousand times better knowing that you have allies in spirit guides and angels uh, ancestral, you know, totems and animals, because they're there. They're there. And we see it. We just have to look for it sometimes. Sometimes we are blindsided because of our own ego and our own arrogance and our own uh, old thinking, stinking thinking sometimes we get, it gets in the way. So open up and expand, open up and, and understand that, you know what? Everybody falls short from time to time. It's those who get back up and fall short and get back up, fall short and get back up, fall short and get back up and never stop and never quit, who make the changes and makes the world a much more valuable place. And if you have to stay there and lay on the ground for a little bit, then stay there until you're ready to get back up. I'm not here to tell you when to do it, how to do it, what it feels like, what it smells like, what it tastes like, but you'll know when you've had enough. You know when you've had you can't take anymore you'll know all right all right guys so i will see you friday and i will see some of you tomorrow uh the virtual drum circle uh peace and love irisiqui matakuyasin ho'oponopono namaste and you know what everything that you like to say and share with people hello goodbye i love you i hug you whatever share that with everyone okay all right take care my friends be well and i will see you next time on Iggy Garcia Live, then make it.